as you can see, and I've done this just because uh, I don't want you to have to wait for me to write this stuff up. I'm anticipating a couple of things that I've particularly noticed. There are way more than two things to observe, way more than two patterns in here, but I'm curious to know whether they're similar to mine or otherwise. What are you noticing about, this is the table we're particularly looking at. We'll come back to this one later, it's important, but any suggestions? No wrong answers here, I just want observations. The higher the interest rate, the present value is lower, okay? Actually, this is one of the things that I've noticed, but let's, let's have a look, right? As you go to the right, we're reading from left to right higher and higher interest rates, right? And you can see, like, look at this, 0 0.9524, 0 0.9434, the numbers are dropping down. And in fact, every row is the same, right? Okay, so as we move to the right, actually, let's, we might as well jot this down now. As we move to the right, interest rate goes up and present value goes down. Okay. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask why this is, right? But we'll, we'll get to that. For now, that's just the observation. Someone else, what else can you see? I mean, that was the columns. What do you notice about the rows? Anything about the rows? Hmm. Say it a bit louder for me, Tyler. The present value, like say this number here, you're talking about this value up here? Yeah, or, like comparing the two values. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so we're comparing tables, which by the way, we will be doing in a minute. That's why I gave you these together. So this present value is always lower than this one, okay? Like if you look at the corresponding cell, because we've got the same columns and the same rows, okay? I reckon we can take it to this point and we can, uh, we can make it even, even stronger of a statement, right? Not only, he's right, not only is the present value for any given cell lower than its corresponding future value cell, just have a look at, like, let's just look into, say, the third row right here. This is the third row, uh, n equals 3. Have a look at every present value in this n equals 3 row. It's not just that this value is less than this one in the other table. Every single one of these present values in row 3 is less than what? They're all less than 3, right? And if you look at the next row down, okay, all these present values are less than 4. You get close, but you never get to 4. And uh, same logic, every present value is less than whatever the corresponding n is, okay? So this is also important to note out. The present values are always less than the corresponding time period, but I'm just going to say n, because that's how we're denoting time period, okay? Yeah, these two points are really important to note down, because if you're like me, the very first time I saw a table like this, I was kind of like, what on earth is going on here? Ooh, was that a notification? It was a notification. Let's go and do not disturb, okay. Um, by the way, there's one final thing I'd just like to observe. I haven't written it down, but has anyone noticed that in both of the, uh, both of the tables, top one and the bottom one, something weird is happening in the top row? And when I say the top row, I don't mean like the, the interest rates. I mean the n equals 1 row. n equals 1? You know, it's like, those are weird, right? For starters, in this one, apparently nothing changes, right? They're all 1. And in this one, they're, they're less than one. What, what's happening here? Aren't we investing money? Like, aren't we earning interest? What's going on, okay? So I'm gonna try and resolve all of these things that we've observed by going back to our definition of what present value is. Now I gave you one, I said one, in fact I said two, but we didn't write them down. Maybe you did, but, but I didn't. So if you didn't, like I did, this is the right time. I want us to actually have a written definition. Your textbook has one, uh, but I want us to have our own one, which is kind of a, probably a little more succinct, okay? We can think about present value in two different ways, all right? And each way is gonna shed light on what on earth this table means and how to understand where it comes from, okay? The first way, which is probably the most mathematical way, you know, like, isn't this all maths? Not exactly. The first way is to think about an initial lump sum. So 
I want you to remember that graph that we drew, right? The graph that we drew, which kind of pictured what was happening as you, as you put in amounts, they earn interest, you put in amounts, they earn interest, and so on, right? What I mentioned to you was, over here, this final point here, this is the future value, okay? Actually, I shouldn't put it on this axis, really should be up here. This is the future value, okay? And then present value is some initial lump sum that if you didn't put in any additional installments, any additional deposits, if you just let it sit there, it would just kind of do its thing, earning interest, and it would get to that future value, the same future value, right? So you can think of present value as an initial lump sum that will eventually get to the future value by way of the interest. Let me say that one more time, right? The present value is this initial lump sum, like today, hence the name present, right? That if you add interest to it, that's all you do. You don't put more deposits, you just let it sit there at 6% or 8% or whatever it is, and it will get to the future value, okay? So there is definition one. Definition two is actually thinking about the future value and you may recall this, and um, some of you, because you do economics, this sort of made more sense to you, but even if you, I mean, I didn't do economics, and this is actually a very important financial reality to get a head, uh, handle on. So this is less mathematical and more like financial and economics, okay? In the future, if I said to you, hey, you can have $100 today, or I can give you $100, you know, in 10 years' time, right? You should absolutely choose the $100 today. Because in 10 years' time, $100 dollars won't be worth as much. What, what's the reason it starts with an I? It's inflation, right? This idea of inflation is that the same number of dollars, like $100, will be worth less. Or a more technical way of saying it is, it has less buying power. Okay? Um, if you're curious to understand that a bit more, by the way, um, it is not within the scope of us explaining this, but I will very happily explain it to you, because I didn't understand it when I was in year 12. Okay? So, coming back to this, we can think of present value as the future value adjusted downward to take inflation into account. Right? So, like I said, this is kind of more mathematical definition. This is a financial economical definition, but in both cases, we can actually just crunch the numbers. Let me show you exactly how this works, because one of them is looking forward in time, and the other one is looking backward in time, okay? Let's, uh, let's pick a row, let's pick a column. Okay, so over here, uh, let's say, let's go with the 8% interest column, okay? So I've got a very generous uh, bank that's giving me 8% interest per annum. 8% here in the future value table, 8% in the uh, present value table. Let's suppose I said 8% per annum, let's go for three years, okay? Now, if we just look at the present value table, when you go in the 8% column and you work down to, sorry, it's this table, when you go from the 8% column and you work down to n equals three, this is the value, 2.5771. Let's drop that down together, okay? 2.5771. We're suggesting that this present value means if you wait for this long, at this interest rate, you'll get to a certain future value. So how do we do that? This is just compound interest, right? You've got this multiplied by, what's the, uh, what's the interest rate calculation? What, what factor am I going to put in here? It's not just the 0 0.08, it's the 1.08, right? The one is the original amount. And then how many times am I suggesting we do it? Three times, so I cube, okay? Can you go ahead, reach for your calculator, you should get a number out there, right? What are you getting? What do we got? I know it starts with a three. <laughs> three point, three, four. Two, four. Six, four. Six, four. That, that should do. Okay, dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now, this, this answer here is already in our table. It's just the other table because we're going towards a future value, right? So now just come across. Uh, what did he say? 8%, 3 years. So here we go. Here's the right column. 3 years, you go n equals 3. You're like, oh, there's the number, right? So do you see what's going on here? Now, this is going forward in time. 
right? The initial lump sum adds its interest on. Now let's, let's come back over here, okay? The future value, if we go for three years at 8% per annum, we're putting in a dollar every time. That's, all these tables are about a single dollar, right? What we know from having looked at the future value table is that you'll end up with this number of dollars, right? That's the future value. By the way, why is it that? And the answer is, well, each of the years you put in a dollar, so I've got the first dollar, the second dollar, the third dollar, and then that gets a bit of interest. And that's the 24 and a bit cents. Does that make sense? Okay. Makes sense. It does make sense. Now, how do we adjust for inflation? How do we adjust for inflation? Well, inflation isn't making our, our money bigger, right? It's making it worth less. So actually, we're going to be dividing, right? Does it make sense? Every year, according to this interest rate, it's like, wow, your money is worth 8% less every year, the same dollar figure, right? So that 8%, I'm going to account for that inflation by doing it three times because every year it happens. Now, just looking at this, this is the part that I said this lesson will be really simple, right? It's like multiplying or dividing. You're like, Mr. Wu, it's hardly worth writing these equations down. These are the same equation. All I've done is just change the subject, right? But the difference is when you write it this way versus this way, you're looking at it forwards in time or backwards in time. Uh, and in much the same way, like any time you get an equation, right, like this, this is like saying, right, you picture a thing, it doubles, and how big will you get? Versus, you've got something growing and you know how big you're going to end up, so how long does it take to get there, right? Same equation, but looked at from a different angle. Are you following? Okay.